What is going on, you two? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined by my co-host, Anthony Rivardo. We have a lot of news to cover today. Rangers made a trade yesterday. They made a signing yesterday. We got some updates on the Truba situation, so we're going to get into that. But before we do, today is a pretty important day for a couple of reasons. First off, happy birthday, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Second off. We hit 1994 subscribers today, so thank you to the fans for making that happen. So we're celebrating for a multitude of reasons today. So we'll get right into this. This episode is dedicated to the fans and to you, Tony. So before we really get into it, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Celebrating my birthday by talking some New York Rangers. What more could I ask for? Happy to be discussing a pretty slow and quiet day for the Rangers on the first day of free agency period. I mean, I wish we had more to talk about. And then I got some birthday presents like a stamp coast or cane signing to talk about. But unfortunately, we didn't get anything like that. All the Rangers top free agency targets happened to go elsewhere. But before we dive into this discussion about the trade that they did make and any of the other trades that maybe will be coming on the horizon, I do have to say thank you to the fans and the viewers. 1994 subscribers, basically 2,000. We're going to do our 2K subscriber special. Um, we're going to have a whole lot of fun for that. So we're planning that right now, and I'm excited to kind of dive into that for you guys and unveil that in the coming weeks as we continue to uh, produce that. But, yeah, thanks for uh, subscribing. Thanks for all the love and support. We really do appreciate all of you, and we love doing the show. So make sure if you're not already subscribed, smash that button down below and leave a like on this video, and uh, plenty more Rangers content coming your way. Absolutely perfect. We're this close to the special. It's going to be a groundbreaking piece of media, to the likes of which the world may have never seen before. Um, <laughs> but let's get right into the discussion. <clears throat> Yesterday, me and Will went live to cover free agency. And, you know, during that live stream, we were quite upset about the fact that it seemed like Chris Jury just overslept. Like he woke up, signed Carrick, and then just went back to bed. Um, and in the moment, you know, watching all the players we want to see sign with us, go to different teams, it, it was pretty upsetting. But now that it's, it's been a day and I've, I've kind of come to terms with a lot of them, like Stamkos making $8 million for four years, that, that's, a, that's a bit much. You know, I, I don't have every single contract pulled up right now, but a lot of the guys that were high up on our target list either got extended for way too long that have contracts that are going to end when they're like 40 or they were severely overpaid. I know another one is Tyler Toffoli, a big name we were talking about. He's making like over six million with San Jose now. Like, I don't know if we needed to pay him that much. So <clears throat> I would have liked to see us do a little bit more um, as far as free agency goes, but I'm okay <clears throat> with the results that we have. Um, obviously we have the trade that we'll talk about in a couple minutes, but I don't know. Tarasenko is still out there. I know the Rangers are possibly interested in him. I don't think that's a likely outcome, though, but we, we can keep our fingers crossed. I know there, there are a handful of teams that are interested in Tarasenko. I know it's confirmed that he wants to stay in Florida, but at this point it's unconfirmed whether they're going to even offer him a contract. So kind of a waiting game. I think roughly 75% of the quality free agents that were out there are gone. There's a couple names that we could still maybe go after, but all of our top guys that we talked about, you know, Marcia So, Stam Coase, Kane, they all went elsewhere. So shout out the Nashville Predators because they took pretty much everybody that we wanted. Um, so we'll see what happens in the future. But like I said, as far as yesterday goes, I've come to terms with it. I don't think Jury did well, but at the same time, I think it was a smarter decision to avoid some of those long-term expensive contracts with some aging veterans. So as far as, as far as yesterday, get one thumbs up, jury, and one thumbs down. Not not two of the either, not one of the either, just one of each. So that's my opinion on how yesterday went, but I know you didn't really get to share your opinion on it, so I'm curious to know how you feel. Yeah, he would have earned the second thumbs up if he actually moved off of Jacob Truba, but now Jacob Truba is uh, kind of holding the Rangers hostage in a way, like refusing to leave and I get it. It's why he's got the no move clause and I don't blame him. What would make him want to leave the Rangers and leave beautiful New York City and go elsewhere, like especially from New York to Detroit, quite a downgrade. So I don't blame him. He's got a life here and he's making eight million dollars on the salary. You can't blame Truba for not wanting to leave. But at the same time, the Rangers have made it pretty clear and Rangers fans have made it pretty clear that they don't want Truba here. So it is kind of like 
how comfortable do you feel returning to the team next season if you're in his shoes? I think that's a, kind of a tough predicament for Jacob Truba. But, but with the trade, I will say one of the things that I like about it, Eric, we talked all offseason long about how the Rangers needed to bring in experienced postseason performers. And at least they've got a Stanley Cup champion now that they traded for with Riley Smith. You know, he's played and he's won. He's, he's hoisted the trophy. And you can't say that about pretty much anybody else on this uh, Rangers lineup for the most part. So I think bringing in a guy with proven playoff pedigree was important. It's not the guy that we necessarily wanted. Of course, it's not a three-time Stanley Cup champion and MVP and Patrick Kane or anything like that. But Riley Smith, he's ho- ho- hoisted a trophy before. And I do think that that's pretty valuable, especially because the Rangers, whether you view this as a potential first line right winger or a bottom six grinder, mid six grinder, whatever you think of Riley Smith, it is important that the Rangers are adding more guys with some playoff experience to the lineup. Yeah. And before I even get into the trade, I, I have to touch upon the Truba situation because to me, I think it's just extremely embarrassing on both sides, you know, with the organization and then just Truba himself. Or we woke up yesterday and the Rangers announced like Truba won't be here next season. Like whether we trade him, buy him out, waive him, Truba's done. And that was like a lock. Like the, the organization like said it, where like the top NHL reporters reported it. And then now today we're like, oh no, he is going to be back. So it's like the fact, you know, like there, there's a whole bunch of different aspects of this that like I don't even want to get into. I think of the way that a lot of the fans have reacted to this, just like making like threats to Truba and his family, like out of pocket. Like y- y- y'all got to chill with that. <laughs> but at the same time, Jacob Truba does have a stranglehold on, on over this organization right now, just refusing to leave. Like we had a deal in place and he was just like, no, like I'm just not going. And then now. I'm sure that had to be a large part of why we didn't make that many moves yesterday because we still have $8 million that we weren't expected to have. So it's the Rangers just stop. Like, I don't even know how to solve this issue. It's just, it's an embarrassment on both sides. And I think this whole thing has just gone really out of, out of control. And if you're Jacob Truba, you know, how do you just show up next season with, with the captaincy? Uh, he's either going to just like try to sabotage this team for, for what we did to him this summer or maybe he'll be on some kind of like personal journey to like redeem himself and prove all the haters wrong. I don't know. Hopefully it's the latter of the, of the two options, but I don't know. Like if I'm Truba, you know, just like wake up, man, just accept your fate like at this point. But I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a sensitive subject with, within the Rangers land right now. But as far as the Riley Smith trade goes, <clears throat> I don't think it was a perfect trade, but I don't really hate it either. I think Smith is a he's a pretty good middle six forward. You know, if our second line wasn't as perfect as it was, I could see him playing on the second line. I don't think he's good enough to play with Kreider and Zibanejad up on the first line. So likely he'll be down on the third line. You know, probably Cooley, Heedle, Smith, which, you know, kind of makes Kako the odd man out there. Maybe Kako gets another chance up there on the first line. But Smith Smith's a great player. I think he's an all-around above average forward you know really the only thing that he was lacking last season was point production but other than that you know every other aspect of the game he pretty much exceeded in helped Vegas win the Stanley Cup back in 2023 and you know had a decent season with Pittsburgh really the only thing I can complain about his season last year was the fact that he had a lack of point production but again the below average Pittsburgh Penguins team that missed the playoffs didn't really have a lot going for them throughout their entire roster so hopefully being with the Rangers playing with Heedle um, possibly Kako or Cooley or whoever might be able to spark some point production in his career. I don't hate what we had to give up, but I wish we didn't have to give up a second round pick for him because now we don't have a second round pick until 2028. You know, four more years of not picking in the second round is a little rough. <laughs> yeah. I have an idea for that though. If you sign Tarasenko, it's an investment in a future second round pick because you can always sign him maybe on a three year deal. And then after two years at the deadline, you offload him for a second round pick. So I think that that could be the Rangers path to getting a future second round pick is if they sign a quality first line winger, they bring somebody in who's really good. You can always offload that player and probably fetch a second round down the road for him while also taking advantage of his services and what he can provide to you on the ice for the beginning portion of the contract. So I think that that's one of the ways that the Rangers can recoup some of their draft capital that they've lost. Obviously, I'm pretty sure they lost a second round pick when they traded for Tarasenko a couple mm-hmm. seasons ago. So 
this could be the way to get that second round pick back. I'm not crazy about giving up a second for Riley Smith, but I get it. It's necessary. Um, and I do think, though, it brings up big question marks about what are the Rangers planning with Capo Caco? Because I don't see Riley Smith playing on the first line. If they're planning on putting Capo Caco up on the first line, I think this entire offseason is an absolute failure. I know that they've been shopping Capo Caco, but no deal has been done just yet. I don't know what the plan is. I am struggling to see Chris Drury's vision right now, which is kind of tough to say because, you know, in the past, I feel like everything's been pretty clear and obvious to us. Like we've seen what he was going for and what each move was setting up with the next move. So far, I am a little bit in question about what's coming next, but I like the Riley Smith acquisition. I don't love it. I think it's okay. Um, he's a decent player. I don't think he he makes us the team that's getting over the hump and beating the Panthers and winning the cup. Uh, you know, like if you're looking back on this past season and the way that things ended for the Rangers, I don't think they're changing. I don't think anything's changing or they're ending any differently for the Rangers just because Riley Smith is in the lineup, which is kind of my point. So in terms of finding that difference making player and adding that final piece, it's yet to happen. And so I don't know how Chris Drury is going to make that happen now that so many players are gone. But my personal last ditch effort would be sign Tarasenko. And again, I'd be extra motivated in doing that just because I know I can bring him on this year, maybe on a two year deal. And at the deadline the following year, going into year two or even in the offseason in year two, I can probably fetch a second round pick for him. So that would be my solution. But I, I am still a little bit confused as to what Drury's vision truly is. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a couple ways we can get our draft capital back, whether it be the, um, the scenario in which you just explained. If the Rangers do end up trading Kako anywhere, prob it would probably be the Ducks at this point. Um, this offseason, maybe they can get some draft capital in return there. A million things that can happen, but um, I don't know. The way that I look at Smith is just we had a hole in the bottom six. We needed more depth, and he fills that hole. I don't really see him being a difference maker that's going to elevate us to the Stanley Cup championship level. Um, still need that top line right winger. And I, I assure you, Smith is not that. So that's so why I'm like a little upset about the second round pick. Hopefully we can make up for it <clears throat> in some way in the future. The conditional fifth round pick is just whatever, you know, is probably just a piece that got Pittsburgh to retain 25% of his salary, which I will say when looking at the deal is the best part about the deal. We have a decent bottom six winger who's making less than $4 million now. So he's cheap. He fills a hole. And, you know, I think as far as that goes, Drury did the best he could. Um, now I kind of just want to wait to see what the rest of his plan is because, you know, um, when it comes to trades and signings and all that, we hear a lot of speculation and rumors around the league. But at the end of the day, um, I saw someone on Twitter called the Rangers front office, like Fort Knox. Like you really have no idea what's actually going down in there. Like it's impossible to get a full read and actually know what jury's plan is. Me and Will talked about it a little bit yesterday during the stream. Once we saw that the Rangers weren't making any signings we're like maybe signing people was never jury's plan. Maybe his whole entire off season agenda is to do things via trades. And he made one trade, the Kako one, I'm sure it'll come at some point and the Truba thing is kind of just like a roadblock, I guess. Like, I don't know. I'm sure Drury is going to continue to try to make something happen. But as long as Truba just keeps saying no, there's really not much we can do here. So I don't know. Hopefully Truba just gets convinced to waive his move clause and we can finally get that big fish that'll take us over the hump, get us to the championship and win it all. Because if I'm being completely honest, yes, the Rangers won the President's Trophy this last season, first overall in the entire NHL. I don't even I don't even see us winning the Metropolitan Division this year. Carolina had like an A plus day yesterday. So did Washington um, and New Jersey. New Jersey went and picked up a handful of stars. So you know, there, there's a there's a world out there where if the Rangers don't perform to, at their best ability this upcoming season, they might finish in a wild card spot unless Drury has one more trick up his sleeve and is able to get us a star that'll help us move past all the other teams in our division getting better. Because at this point, everyone else around us got better, and we pretty much just stayed the same. So I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what the future brings. But so far, I'm a little underwhelmed by the Rangers offseason. We were supposed to be a team that made a major splash, and all we've done is sign a fourth-line center who probably won't even play the whole season up in the NHL and a decent third-line guy. Um, I'm, like I said, a little underwhelmed, and I feel like – like I said at the very beginning of this episode, smart move by Jury to avoid signing these major contracts to a bunch of 34-year-olds. 
but you got to do something and we might be fumbling it here. So I don't know. Hopefully there's more trades to come. Yeah. I, I'm kind of feeling the same way as you are. Yeah. Maybe the Rangers added some decent talent at positions of need. You know, they needed depth. They needed more third, fourth line guys. Sure. Like that's all true, but they also do need to address that first line right wing. And so far they haven't been able to, and the path to doing so is a little bit murky. So I'm going to hold out hope that Drew refigures something out. Maybe he's working on some huge blockbuster trade behind the scenes that we don't know about. Maybe there is something going on, and that's why we've heard so much chatter about Kako and Trubo over the past several weeks. Uh, I think at least one of those guys is getting moved still, whether it's waving Trubo or trading Kako. Something's going to happen, I think. So just holding out hope that slowly but surely Drew gets the pieces knocked down. And I'm hoping and praying that, Maybe later today or tomorrow, Eric, we're back doing an emergency reaction episode because the Rangers signed uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. That's what I'm hoping for. It's still possible. So there are options out there. Uh, there's probably more other than just Tarasenko. That's just the one that I'm locked in on and focused he, on. I but... think he's the, biggest, he's the biggest name left out there at this point. And, dude, the reason that I want him back is because I feel like when we made all those trades, first of all, Tyler Mott, most impactful trade we made that season, but I'll digress off that. In terms of the big blockbusters that we brought in, Kane and Tarasenko, Tarasenko lived up to the expectations and the hype and probably exceeded the expectations. He was so great, uh, and he was playing on that first line right wing. So just put him right back there. Sign him. Get him right back into that spot. I don't care. Sacrifice Kako for Tarasenko? Sure. I don't think Kako is the difference maker who goes up on the first line and wins us a cup. I think Tarasenko can be. I think he can go on that first line and maybe win us a freaking cup. So make the deal. Offload Kako. Maybe bring in an extra second round pick if you can get that. And I don't know if that's going to be possible for Kako, but get something for him. Maybe bring in another player who can grind on the third line for you and then go ahead and sign Tarasenko. And I think then you're talking about a Rangers team that is improved after a couple of days of free agency. But I digress off that. We'll see what happens and continue to react to it. I am just, like I said, struggling to see the vision here with Drury, but holding out hope and confidence that he will uh, he will figure out a way to make this team better. Yeah, I mean, as far as the Tarasenko thing goes, I, I did just pull up Twitter really quick, and apparently earlier this morning, the Penguins did make an offer to him, but they only have about just over $4 million in cap space left, so I don't know if that'll be enough to re-sign him. Like I said earlier, I know he also wants to stay in Florida, but we'll see. Hopefully the big fish comes. You know, I'd be more than happy to have to make an emergency episode two hours from now, just seeing if, we, if we're able to pull something off. But I don't know, Jury, time to wake up. Time to get this team back on track because right now my confidence level is starting to decline. But <clears throat> we'll see. Hopefully something happens soon. Hopefully Riley Smith just goes off, becomes an amazing player, and carries us to a Stanley Cup. I don't know. But I think that about wraps up today's episode of Fireside Rangers. So if you guys did enjoy, please make sure that you like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss notification. The 2K special coming at you soon. Um, like we said yesterday during the stream, it's not going to come out right exactly when we hit 2K, but within a reasonable amount of time, it'll be here. It requires a lot of planning and uh, execution, which is going to be interesting to see how we pull it off. But have a good one. Follow our social medias and let's go Rangers.